हरे ओ वासुदेव जगद्योनि नौमी नारायण हरि कृष्णा वासुदेवाय हर ये परमात्म प्रणतक्लेशनाशा गोविंदय नमो नम So welcome to all of you, and today I <coughs> extend the greetings to all of you on behalf of all our Indian group, because today is the spe- is a special day, festival of light. Yes, Diwali. Diwali, it's called Diwali, celebrated all over India <coughs> with great joy. So. It is good you have selected this day for our study of the life of Krishna, because the celebration of Diwali is also connected to the life of Krishna. It started the celebration since the <coughs> a great demon who was destroyed by Krishna. Since after that. it became a tradition to celebrate this diwali <coughs> so today we are going to make a study of the book written by master ek that is the first book in the series master ek has taken up one of the great works which he has taken up is to give out the life of lord krishna of course all the details of the life of krishna are known to many people around the world but what was the preparation preparatory aspect for the advent of lord krishna which was 
the work taken up by all the great sages the rishis because it is not just a work on the personality level but it is a great event for the whole mankind for the whole creation itself when the lord manifested in the physical form once again and how all these various great personalities or great lights who have also incarnated from the highest plane of consciousness they also descended into the physical frame to cooperate with the work of the lord on the physical plane and to prepare the people to receive this light and how what were the situations on the earth in the lives of common people and also how all the rulers on this earth were behaving and what has necessitated the advent of the lord to come down into form <clears throat> all these aspects they are given in all the records of the epic mahabharata and also in the puranas as they were the records of contemporary in time because mainly it was veda vyasa <coughs> who was the main composer of all these records he was living contemporary to lord krishna his advent was a bit before the advent of krishna himself and so he and all his colleagues how they were trained by their masters mainly master parasara who was a great rishi great grand master so how he has trained veda vyasa and maitreya <coughs> and all these masters so all these various aspects are recorded in various puranas but how to synthesize all these records and give this in a form in which it is easily accessible for the common people that was the aim of master ek that was the task of master ek he has taken up so it happened that <coughs> when he got all this plan then the whole plan the whole life all this with all these aspects it came to be brought into seven books and seven also is a very mystic number because that is one of the mystic numbers of this creation mm-hmm. that is why it, he did not intend to bring it in seven but it came like that master never intended anything by himself to do he just received and responded so that that's how <coughs> it came so it was the sixth book first which came into writing that is the very mystic aspect sixth book in telugu which was later translated by himself into english that is music of the soul mm-hmm. 
This was the first book. That was the first book. But it is the sixth. Is it the sixth in the, th in the series? Mm -hmm. <laughs> book six. In this book also, in this music of the soul, you know how those who have studied can realize that how he has given all this plan of the masters and how they cooperated with the work of Lord Krishna like this. And then came the seventh book in Telugu that was also translated by himself, that is Man's Sacrifice. So those two, sixth and seventh books were translated by him already when he was physical, in physical form. So those books are existing in English. And after the sixth and seventh, then came the first book mm. <laughs> in the series. So the first book, it starts, <coughs> the book commences with the plan which was there worked out by these masters to make a preparation for the advent of the Lord. Has this book a special title? Yes. In Telugu the title is Purana Purushudu. Uh, if you close this, it will be too warm inside. Yes, this one? Okay, I will open it. There is a old wind. This is the first book. This is the first book, book one. The meaning of this, this title can be translated into English. Purana means ancient. And Purushudu means person. Purusha means person. Purusha is Sanskrit word. Purusha means person. Uh, not ancient, sorry. Eternal. Eternal person. Purana means eternal. Generally, in, in normal terms, it is used as ancient, but exact translation is eternal. Yeah. So, the title of the book should be taken as Eternal Person. Mm And this book so this is the book the first book is eternal person and this, this book is only in Telugu. this is in Telugu oh. not yet translated uh, into English this was this is in 33 chapters you see the number also significant. Mm -hmm. 33. Master has explained the significance of this number several times in his lectures given. Master has given here. <coughs> so, this book starts with a dialogue between Veda Vyasa And his mother, Satyavati, now I will a bit explain you 
it is important to explain you about the birth of Veda Vyasa also, because that is also very significant. Because Veda Vyasa is also a great light <coughs> which came down to work out all the Vedic literature to be brought into the accessibility to common people and all the Puranas, all this literature and also the Brahma Sutras, all these were brought into the present form by Veda Vyasa. <coughs> so this Veda Vyasa, his original name was also Krishna, Krishna Dvaiparina. Krishna Dvaipayana. That is his name. Vyasa's name. Vyasa's name. <coughs> it is it is said by the all the spiritual people that Vyasa is also the light of the Lord Himself who came down for this purpose. And the birth of Vyasa is also very special. It's not like the birth of the normal human beings. <clears throat> there is a grand master, a great sage. His name was Parasara. This Parasara is the grandson of Vasista. I think you are you are familiar of this name also because Master has several times explained about Vasistha. Because these are the grand masters on supracosmic level, but from time to time they manifest themselves on the earth also in the physical form. Whenever it is necessitated for some special work on the planet, on the planetary level. So then they come down. So Vasistha is on the supracosmic plane. He is one of the masters of the seven stars of the great bear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is one of the senior sons. Mm -hmm. So this is, and that Vasistha in one of his advent on his on this physical because you find Vasistha also in Ramayana at the time of Rama <coughs> because the predecessors of Rama were all the disciples of Vasistha. You know why it is? Because on the supracosmic plane Vasistha is the guru of our sun, of our solar system. <coughs> so therefore, since Rama and his predecessors were the descendants of the solar clan, that is why he is considered as guru of all the descendants of the solar clan. So therefore, he was, he was there also physically, existing in the form at the time of Rama and once again before the advent of Krishna once again he manifested, he came down in the physical form 
and from that Vasistha, then Vasistha had his son, his name was Shakti. So Vasistha's son is Shakti, Shakti's son is Parasara. And Parasara's son is Vedavyasa, who was Krishna Dvaipayana. This is the order. Vasistha from the top Vasistha Vasistha's son was Shakti Shakti's son was Parasara Parasara's son is Vedavyasa that is the order so this Parasara he has a task that time so he was given a task of bringing all the Vedic wisdom to the level of the common man and also to work out the foundation for the advent of the Lord. So then this Parasara wanted to bring <coughs> such a light into forum for this work and on a particular day when he was travelling on a boat, then on the cosmic plane he could see when is the time for it and that was the time exactly when he has to bring this higher soul into forum. And then there he has seen Satyavati. Satyavati is, she is a lady but highly elevated and of the virgin nature. So, not, not just only virgin on the physical plane, but virgin nature. <clears throat> just like Mary, the world mothers. So, that level, virgin nature. So, he has seen her, by, by seeing her, he could, he could visualize that she will be fit to receive this light to come down and this was not on any physical contact. Then he told her that you are selected to be the mother of the descending light. So if you accept that light will be projected through you. So she accepted and he made her to sit in the boat in the meditation, in meditatory, in the meditation, and then then he invoked that light, and that light first passed into him, and passed into her. Because an advent on the physical plane needs the male principle, female principle, not just only on the physical body or physical contact, but on the higher plane also. This is not easily understood for the mod, for the present human race. So this is not by physical sexual contact. So he invoked this light and sent this into her. And immediately it came into the form through her and in the form of Vedavyasa. It is not, she has, she got, she did not get impregnated and pregnancy and delivery, all this was not there. It has nothing to do with that, directly. So this is the phenomenon in which Vedavyasa was brought into existence by Parasara. So this is first thing which we have to always understand this. So Vedavyasa is a very highly elevated level of consciousness. So he came down immediately and he he offered his reverence he bowed down to his father and mother and then he asked his father and his guru Parasara's father and also his master who created him so he asked him what he has to do 
hands. And then Parasara explains him about his task, what he has to do. And he started to work. He not just like a little boy and wait until he is grown up. It's beyond this, all this physical phenomenon. Even though it was on the physical plane existence, but it is work is in the higher plane. So that is the advent of Vedavyasa, that is how it came. And after this, Parasara told Sachavati that she, she is free, she can live as before. So she is, even after the birth of Vedavyasa, she was virgin because of this. There was no physical touch, nothing on the physical plane. That is how Vedavyasa is also son of a virgin. Even after his birth, she is a virgin. This we have to remember. <clears throat> because this all, all this has important for us to know, for further steps to understand about Krishna's advent <clears throat> and all this work. So this is what Master brought all these things, a synthesis. Because if you only have this, <clears throat> the story of Krishna, you know, most of the people know the story of Krishna. He was how he was born and how he has grown up, all these things. But all this synthesis and all this together, that is given by Master for the first time. This is there in all the Puranas. In especially, <coughs> Master has taken up Mahabharata, The composition of Vedavyasa, the epic. And then Harivam said, <clears throat> but uh, excuse me, you mean? He passed the light from uh, feminine, from the masculine to the feminine. Yes. And then the baby was born. Immediately. Yeah, as a baby. He's not pregnant. As a baby. It, she, uh, he he manifested through her mm -hmm. directly, mm -hmm. from the light to the form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is uh, the pure mental process. Yes. Yes. And this is what humanity has now to go in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This because is, we have to live this emotional and physical yes. this is the, consciousness. All the this is a higher emotional and astral and all these yeah, things are not there. Mm. Because the, this purity is important. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the Aquarian age, what now starts, next what starts, is only on this level. Yeah. It should be. Yeah. But he was adult or he was a baby? Not a baby. Adult right away? Yes, right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A boy. A boy. He started immediately the task, what is given by his master, mm. by his father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this only happened once? This? Yeah, this happens not, mm, sometimes it happens once in, once in a yuga or like that. <laughs> this happens. But not now? Now? No. Mm, now, now also the another example is, uh, but at certain level, at certain level, for example, the birth of Jesus the Christ mm. to Mary, Same. Same. also, yes. but she has impregnated him. She she is not by physical like this, but she also received the light. But she had all its impregnation, pregnancy and delivery. Mm. But here in Vedavyasa, there is no pregnancy and no delivery. It is still on the higher. They are different levels, but that is also similar. <clears throat> that is also beyond astral and uh, emotional and all these levels. Mm -hmm. So, Master has taken Mahabharata, Harivamsa, Padma Purana.
Devi Bhagavata. This is another Purana. And finally, this Bhagavatam is the last composition of Veda Vyasa in his life. That is the supreme. Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam. <clears throat> you can also call it Mahabhagavatam. Maha. Mm-hmm. And there are also there is another one, a synthesis of all these things were given in Vishnu Purana. Mm. That was composed by Parasara. Mm. So the Vishnu Purana, <coughs> Parasara has given the Vedic link to the descendancy and the life of Lord Krishna. Because Parasara has already given before the advent of Krishna itself, he has given in Vishnu Purana about what is going to happen, how the Lord will come down, all these things. So, this Parasara has the vision of all the times even forthcoming times. <clears throat> so, all the other Puranas, because Vedavyasa has composed Mahabharata, that is epic. Apart from that, he has composed 18 Puranas. 18. 18. So, all these, for all these 18 and all these, the seeds are there in Vishnu Purana. Composed by Parasara. So Parasara is the Grand Master. And Varavyasa is the son and disciple of Parasara. And Master Maitreya also is co-disciple of Varavyasa. He was a disciple of Parasara. That you know already about Maitreya. So then, now we <coughs> now Satyavati, the mother of Vedavyasa, mm-hmm. now we will see how further steps what happened is that the whole kingdom of Bharat, the larger, the greater India, because India is the, not the name of the land. It is very, very later. The name of the land is Bharat. It is very, very large. So this was under the rule of, at at large, it was under the rule of the kings who are the descendants of the Chandravamsa. Chandravamsa means the clan of coming from moon, from the lunar descendancy. So Krishna also came down through the lunar descendancy. Rama came down through the solar descendancy. (coughs) 
So, Master, he started, he commences this book with the first chapter with a dialogue between Vedavyasa and his mother, Satchavati. So, in this first chapter, it is explained that Satchavati, Satchavati lived very long span on the physical plane and Vedavyasa also lived a long span because we cannot compare the span of our human beings now with the human beings at that time. Mm. It was very long, mm. even on the physical plane also. <coughs> because that is in Dwapara Yuga, we are now in Kali Yuga. So there, there is a change in several aspects between one Yuga and another Yuga. So there was the main kingdom is mainly the center of that is Hastina, the city of Hastina, which is now called Delhi. Mm. <coughs> So Hastina was the capital even at that time also for the whole of larger Bharat and the rulers from the Chandra Vamsya, they were ruling the whole country, the whole land from Hastina as the capital. And then, and <coughs> then at certain level of this, you have a king called Sentanu, Sentana. Yeah. In Sanskrit, his name is Kivila Santanu. You can, you can call Santana or Santanu. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he is the younger brother of Devapi. This Santanu is the younger brother of Devapi. So this Devapi, because he was the eldest of the three sons, so he was to be the king, to continue, the emperor. But this Devapi, he told his father that he is not, he has a special task for which he has come down and he wanted to go to as a disciple to Maitreya and this Devapi is no other than Master Kuthumi who was known, known as Master Kuthumi at a later time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this Devapi, he told his father that he is not going to take up as emperor. So with the permission of his father then he went to Maitreya. So then Santanu became the emperor. And the Santanu it happened that there is also another a workout of the divine plan. There was a lady called Ganga. So this Ganga is the manifested form of 
the deity of the river Ganga. Your Ganges is the river, the holy river. Mm-hmm. So the governing deity of this river, mm-hmm. she has also taken a form that time because that was also a part of the divine plan. So on the higher plane, she was the presiding deity of the river Ganga. And then she took the form of a woman on the physical plane and the Shantanu wanted to wanted to marry her, to make her <coughs> his queen of the kingdom. Then Ganga, she has a special task. This is also very part of divine plan. You know, <clears throat> among the group of devas, Master has explained and also our previous studies, we have also studied about this. Adityas, Rudras and Vasus. So the Vasus are eight in number. They are called the lords of materialization. So these eight Vasus, once it happened that they were, they received an order, a cosmic order, to once come into a form, come into incarnation on the physical plane. And the eighth one of these Vasus should continue for a longer period and all the seven before they can leave immediately after taking the body. That was the special thing which is given to, to them for a special reason. And that was given to Ganga. That is why Ganga was sent to into a forum. So she was she had to take up as a mother of these eight fellows. And now since Santaro wanted to marry Ganga to make his queen, then this Ganga tells him that I have a special instruction for me from higher. So according to that, whatever I do, you should not oppose this or try to control this. The moment you try to stop this or control this, I will leave you. So on that acceptance, she married him. Then she got pregnant. She got first child. As soon as she delivered the child, she took the child and thrown into Ganga, her own river. And so the, the child disappeared. Like this, seven times she did the same <coughs> to relieve this, this seven higher forms to go back. And according to that instruction, the eighth one has to live a long time on this earth. So this time Santanu said, now I won't allow you to take this baby, eighth baby. You have already seven children you have thrown into the river. I don't know what is the mystic cause for this, but the <coughs> eighth one, I want to have my, my son to be alive, who should continue me to, to rule this land. So I cannot now allow you to do that. Then Ganga said, I am also happy because this is my task, what I have to do. <laughs> and so, she said, now this boy will live for a longer time. <clears throat> for a long time, he will be very famous. He will be very valorous fellow. So, he will be trained by the, by the sages and he will come back to you. So, that is, then she, she left again and she left his child with one of the rishis for training and she again went back into her original form, divine form, living physical form. So his Shantanu was alone then. Then his son came back. <coughs> his son, this eighth fellow, who was the son of Shantanu and Ganga, his name was Devavrata. Oh. 
ದೇವವ್ರತ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಹಸ್ ಗ್ರೋನ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಯಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ದೇವವ್ರತ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಗಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿ ಗಾಟ್ ದಿ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ನೆಸೆಸರಿ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ರೂಲರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಶಂತನು ವಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಶಂತನು ಈವನ್ ದೋ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗುಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆಂಡೆನ್ಸಿ ಬಟ್ ಶಂತನು ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ on the emotional levels and on the on the astral levels not on the higher mental level even though he is the ruler so he was feeling to have a lady as his wife he still could not get out of this even after getting eight children <laughs> he could not get rid of this <coughs> so that time one day it happened that he has seen satyavati the mother of vedavyasa because parasara has after the birth of vedavyasa he said you are you are a virgin so you can be as before so parasara never wanted to have uh, her with him because he was not on this level parasara is on a very higher level so he he let her be free like before so she this santanu happened to see her sachavati and got very much fascinated to marry her and then sachavati said he, he has to take permission from her father so her father when santanu approached him then he said he has put some conditions <laughs> he said if you want to marry my daughter you must accept and promise that the children of my daughter should be the next rulers of your kingdom <laughs> otherwise i won't accept to give my daughter as a wife to you then santanu was not happy because he knows his son is very much he is grown up already he was already of 16 years like that already he is very very much educated spiritually and also in all the all the sciences he is so intelligent person this devavrata because he is incarnation of the vasus so he is on the higher plane so Santanu said, no, I can't do that because I can't discard my son. He is very much fit to be the ruler of this land. And he is also, on the physical plane also, he is very valorous to protect the people. He has all the qualities of a ruler. So he said, then I will not marry your daughter if you put such conditions. <laughs> then this fellow father of such was said yes said then you can go i can't i can't agree for that then he was a bit sad and somehow this devavrata could know this that his father was sad why he was sad so then he he approached the father of sachavati and he said on my on behalf of my father i promise you that i will not be the ruler of the land i will be the protector of the children of your daughter with my father so i will make them rulers i will make the child child the son of her the ruler and i will be a protector for him i promise you and then he has put another further condition it is okay you will promise me but you also one day you will marry and you will have children and your children will be powerful <laughs> so then they can throw away the children of sachavati from the throne then this devavrata said i also promise you that i will not marry in my life 
I sacrifice all this for my father. <laughs> and he 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 has taken as a his 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 sworn in, and he confirmed all this, and he said, "I will never return back from this what I have promised." And so, since he made this such a promise, which is not, which you cannot expect from normal human beings to sacrifice uh, their whole life from their uh, physical comforts and all these things, who will sacrifice? So, because he has sacrificed all these things for his father, from that day he is called Bhishma. So Bhishma was not his original name. It's a title given to him for his sacrifice. Bhishma. So he convinced his father about his promise, and he convinced his father that he will. Stay, and he will protect all the kingdom. He will protect his brothers. He will protect everybody. But he will not be on the throne. Like this, he convinced his father. Then his father married Sachchavati. And then Shantanu with Sachchavati. He got two more sons. One is Chitrangada, and another is Vichitra Virya. These two fellows, these are these two are the sons of Shantanu with Satyavati. So they are the younger brothers of Bhishma. But these two fellows are not so virtuous like Bhishma. <laughs> It is because. Bhishma is. He has incarnated from the higher plane to Ganga, and Bhishma was trained by the rishis, and he he had he has sacrificed his all his comforts very easily because he is not attached to the physical form. He is already highly elevated person. But these two fellows are not like that, because these two fellows are born because from the lower plane of consciousness of Santanu, because Santanu had sexual attraction <laughs> like the normal fellows, and these fellows are born from him from that emotional and astral levels. Therefore, they are not having all those qualities of Bhishma. And what happened is because everything goes according to divine plan. What happened is Shantanu left his body and he became older, and then Bhishma made the first fellow, the follower, the emperor, for the kingdom. Even though he is not fit, but Bhishma. to keep up his word he was there to protect the kingdom so he made him the emperor and this fellow was very arrogant <laughs> he is not valorous he is not spiritual but he is arrogant as a ruler and he started to misbehave he started to create 
divide and rule thing he, he used to divide the people he used to divide this all these uh, councils who are working <coughs> so he started to make wrong policies even though bhishma was directing him he he did not obey bhishma his brother <coughs> and then one day what happened is he had he went into battle with some astral beings and he was killed hmm. in that battle because he has not such powers bhishma has very great powers but bhishma will not go into such things but this fellow because he is arrogant because of his arrogancy and misbehavior he got killed then bhishma made the second fellow the ruler <laughs> and the second fellow is still worse he has no time to take up the problems of the people he has no time to think about the kingdom because he is busy always with wine and woman <laughs> he indulged himself into all vices so his all his work is to set where are beautiful women and have them <coughs> and wine and all these things as we see in german wine weib und gesang <laughs> wine weib und gesang gesang is music and yeah all these yeah. lower things mm. so bhishma could not bhishma was helpless so bhishma wanted to prevent this to make him in proper manner so he selected and two girls from the royal family another royal family bhishma he selected two girls from another good royal family and this royal family is the family of the rulers of kasi kasi is what is called varanasi now banaras that was another kingdom and the rulers and this it is in in this family was born maitreya it was it was other than that uh, that family but maitreya also told his father because the it is a very good family that was the family who were mainly protecting ayurvedic science ayurveda maitreya was a past master in ayurveda also <coughs> so maitreya also told his father that he is also not for kingdom he went as disciple of parasara and then his brother was made the king and he was a good fellow so that in that descendancy so there are two there are two girls and bhishma brought these two girls and married them to his brother thinking that at least he will be stabilized properly but he was not the same no change he was always <coughs> he has in, he has introduced uh, all the lower things into his colleagues all cheap uh, dirty things uh, he was very he introduced corruption also in the kingdom <laughs> and he made divisions so whoever cooperated with him to bring a beautiful woman he has given them higher positions in the in the government <laughs> so like this all these things and the, finally he got a disease by which he died the disease is called consumption so like like tb is natural because of such behavior yeah, yeah. he destroyed his physical body mm. by all these things so he died 
when he was young. So these two girls are left as two widows from him. Now the problem is who should be the ruler of this great dynasty? Who will be the ruler of the land? Then <coughs> Satyavati, she was, she was really uh, worried about how there should be a protection for the land. For it. There should be a good ruler. He should be a spiritual fellow. He should be also be valorous <coughs> to protect his kingdom, his, his people. And also he should be able to guide the people also in spiritualism. So all these things are required. So she is worried. She is not worried because of the death of her sons. She knows that they are useless fellows. <laughs> she is not sad. She is not worried about that. She is worried about the, how we have to, for the kingdom, for the people. So she called, uh, she called Bhishma. <coughs> Devavrata. And he said, now there is no purpose for your promises. My sons are gone. You have promised not to take up the kingdom. You have promised not to marry. All these things you have did as a sacrifice for your father. But now your father is not there and also these two brothers are gone. For whom you have taken all these pains. Now our aim is to protect this kingdom in a proper manner because this is not only the, to rule but also to to guide the people in spiritualism all this this is a this this descendancy is a very good descendancy and this is the main kingdom of the land so she said now you take up you are the only fittest person in every respect to to be the emperor so i as the mother you are also like my son. So, now I ask you to take up the kingdom. I ask you to, to marry a suitable girl and to have a good children, not, not like the children what I got, your brothers. So, you are the fittest person. You should do that. You withdraw your promises. There is no purpose for these promises anymore. And this is for the dharma. This is for the purpose. This is not for you should you should not take into consideration personal things here. Mm. But this fellow, he said, Mother, I cannot withdraw my promises because I want my name should be permanently <laughs> in the history. Because now people call me Bhishma because I made such Tremendous promise. So I cannot withdraw my promise anymore. But Sachivati said, it is not for me, not for you, but for, for the people to have a proper emperor. You have to, there are, so, there is a, a, what is called a personal dharma. Dharma, the law, is on two levels. Dharma means law. One is on the personal level. And another is on social level. So Satchavati said, <coughs> whenever it is necessary, for the social dharma, you have to change your personal dharma. You have to sacrifice this. You should not sacrifice social things for personal things. Mm. <laughs> Especially you, you are the protector. <clears throat> you promised your father that you will protect this land and this kingdom and all these things. Now how can you protect? So, you have to Sacrifice, uh, but he said, I cannot sacrifice this. That is where he could not 
make a proper discrimination. <laughs> so this is a very a very important event. So she could not convince him to sacrifice. So Vitra, his promises son to take up the kingdom and to marry and to have children, he refused this. He said, "As long as I am alive, I will see that this kingdom is intact." But she said, "That is not the way. You should have an emperor." <laughs> so then. she was thinking what to do what is the god's plan what is the divine plan <clears throat> then she invoked vedavyasa because already vedavyasa is in his work on the higher planes but he promised his mother when he when he was, he got manifested he promised his mother whenever you have any problem you just think of me i will be i will be before you he has such powers he is divine <clears throat> so she on on her birthday this is what in the first chapter of this book that was the day of her birthday she was born on vaisak full moon She was born on the Vaishak full moon, the Taras full moon, and Vedavyasa was also born on Vaishak full moon when she was of twenty years age. At her twentieth year, Vedavyasa manifested through her exactly on the same day, Vaishak full moon. Master has given also the the age. She she has given <coughs> she has given a a sort of description of her qualities. She was of a high quality, such a lady. That is why she was selected by Parasara for Vedavyasa's coming down. So at that time. she was of 180 years on this day 180 years and vedavyasa was born on her, on her 20th year so he is now 160 years of age so all this bit in between this all these things happened so now <coughs> she so before this before already in the first chapter before this in between she she invited vedavyasa and she told all this sons vedavyasa said i know all this mother what is happening because he could see it his vision what is all happening cuz he has such a vision so he asked his mother what is what what do you want and she said now you have to make a sacrifice she said i am ready to do what for the for the establishment of the law and for a, for the divine plan then she said with your power with your spiritual power you now have to make the two women who are my daughters in law with your spiritual power you make them pregnant at least those children will be the the they will be further rulers of this kingdom who will come from your light they will be proper persons then by the way as i said okay <clears throat> i can for, with my power i can do that so you instruct your daughters in law to be ready for that so this to she she called her two daughters in law and told the first of first the first one he told she told so this is what is going to happen so you be ready to receive this from yasa so then 
she was not very very much with this wisdom and all these things because she was on normal level so when she was asked to sit before vyasa she was closed her eyes not to see him and so this this power who he transmitted could make her pregnant but the fellow who was born was born as blind by birth because she closed her eyes <laughs> then sachavati asked vyasa once again how can a blind fellow be ruler is not good so once again you the second <coughs> daughter in law i will send her you and power you make your power he said okay the second one has a good understanding of these things and good veneration for the rishis for the great people and then she could normally in the normal position of receiving and then he projected this light into her she got impregnated and she delivered the second one who is the <coughs> pandu his name is pandu the first one the blind fellow is dhrashtra the second one and dhrashtra is the blind blind one and the second one is pandu this pandu is the father of pandavas <coughs> and then sachavati said since the first fellow is almost like an invalid fellow <coughs> now only we have one fe- one fellow they want to have another one from the from the mother of pandu because there there can be two fellows suppose if one fellow fails at least another fellow will be there but she, but this this time this lady what she did was she had because she is a princess she has one of her councils another lady who is also a spiritual lady so she sent her before him she did not appear before him she sent her before him and she was sitting she was a devotee she was a spiritual person so vyasa projected his light into her she got pregnant and she, then <coughs> to her is born another one is called vidura so these three are brothers and this vidura is very virtuous person spiritual person so he is not inclined to be a roller but a very spiritual pious person he is a devotee also <coughs> so all this happened and after this one day sachavati called on varavyasa and that was the starting of this book in this so <clears throat> sachavati was speaking to her son vedavyasa about what is happening what are what are the situations that are happening now <clears throat> in all the kingdom among all the people and people of various rulers and all these things what is the <clears throat> because parasara already has given the forecast parasara is such a great uh, seer he already has given a forecast 
that Lord is coming down to earth in a forum and he will come down from the eighth pregnancy for his mother previous seven pregnancies the children will not be there but on the, for from the eighth pregnancy he will come down and then he will establish the law once again and he will dispel all this all this activity of the black forces and bring an order on this earth so this was the forecast what parasara has given so in this first chapter sachavati called on to vedavyasa to speak to discuss about these events and then she starts this was this first chapter was in the palace of hastina because sachavati stays in the palace she, she is the mother of these kings <coughs> she is the now she is the grandmother of these fellows so she started to speak to vedavyasa her, her son on this full moon day of vaishak she said i have called you this day because this is the birthday for you and for me also since you were born on my own birthday i want to just express to you all these events what are going on and i want to know about more about the advent of the lord coming down so vedavyasa he explains his mother what his father parasara has given all this plan to work out all this task of working on with all this vedic literature for people and also preparing the ground for the lord to coming down and because that is also an important work because people among people common people also they should also feel the necessity of the advent of the lord because when when the law is disturbed and lawlessness is going up then the lord will come down that is always always the cosmic order so therefore para sachavati is she is such a lady she is such a on a very high level of inter- <coughs> spiritual level so she wants also how her son is cooperating with all this so vadavyasa explains all this and he says my father has for, he has forecasted all these things he has explained all these things but as it appears normally now there is all such <coughs> such disturbances are there in people common people and also in the rulers among all the people because they are they are giving up their virtues and more they are going on astral and emotional levels and improper behaviors so this will not be good for the continuation of human race like this so that is why he said among all this chaos what is happening now it is time that lord will come down into the form to destroy all the evil and to bring an order once again to establish an order that is very much going to happen so in this sachavati says that when i heard your father telling me about this forecast that lord will come down from the eighth pregnancy then i thought it must be bhishma because he also came down from the eighth pregnancy of his mother ganga i thought this must be the advent of the lord but when i asked him to take up the 
kingdom and to marry and to have children when he refused this for his personal <coughs> dharma and for all his personal aspect because he wanted to have his good name for me for all the times people should have his name his fame for what he has done sacrifice so then i was very much disappointed when bhishma refused this <coughs> and she says that when bhishma refused this when i asked you i invited you and i asked you to use your spiritual power to bring the children for these ladies you just obeyed my order because you are never afraid of making this because you are you you, you are always for the social virtue social dharma that is important so she says i am pleased with you because you have obeyed this order and you are responsible for again reestablishing this clan then she says that sometimes it comes to my mind maybe you are the person the lord lord ship coming down because you are so virtuous and you are working for the humanity then vedavyasa says no i am not the advent of the lord but i know i was brought for a special purpose by my father to cooperate with the work of the lord when he comes down so for that purpose i am here so that is how he explains all the intricacies of all these clans and also he explains all the evil plans of also those who are affected by the forthcoming kali influence and he explains also her mother <coughs> what is the plan of parasara in the work of the in the divine aspect so she is very much pleased by this and she then <coughs> the chapter ends when she gives her blessings to her son to continue this work so that is so in the first chapter is so important in the book because it has all the seeds for all the expansion of the whole plan not only in the series of these books but also it gives all the seeds of what has happened and what is going to work out for the advent of the lord so that is the importance of the first chapter in this book the opening chapter is and you know <clears throat> master has written this sixth sixth book first mm. so when the first book is written after the sixth book it is not so easy but these two are so well connected the first book and the sixth book because all these connections should be properly aligned if you go from the first book it is normal but if you write the sixth book and then coming to the first book you should have all these sequences and connections so all these things are given as seeds in the very first book in the very first chapter that is how master started his writing of this book with the first chapter so all these aspects master could visualize otherwise he cannot just bring this into <laughs> a book he could have the vision of all these things as synthesis in a very synthetic manner so when we read this book again and again i have most of us i and punaya who have read this book many number of times to to get into the synthesis of master what master has given 
in his book. I, I understand this. This is the call for the entrance into the Aquarian age now. Yeah. Because the Aquarian age is a mental age, military orient, dominating and uh, oriented age. So the human being has now to be lifted out of emotional uh, lifestyles. And uh, the Aquarian age is before us. So yes. For the next two and a half thousand years. So I, I really see this as this is why he, he was the music of the soul. The soul is the higher consciousness of a human being. Yes. This is the mental plane. And the book one, this is what we heard now in the last one and a half hours here. This is training for lifting ourselves in all life situations to the mental plane. To stop our emotional reactions. This is animal lifestyle. This has nothing to do with a human being. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this is the liberation from this animal lifestyle, what we have on the planet, so widespread and what creates so many, many problems everywhere because the clear mind is not yet dominating and not guiding us. So, for me, this is very essential that we have this guidance and the understanding. And this is also a process of liberation from um, many, many things which are really not necessary. Yeah. Actually, they are all, they are all binding more towards the form aspect. Yeah. They are binding, tying down yeah, to the form the aspect. Today, they all they want to keep us on, f fixed on the form. Right? So see what they distribute all on the sex life and so on, and the political. Uh, and it is all, been, all in the direction of uh, to be a rich man, to have enough money and so forth. This is all bound, you are bound constantly to the matter and you are not really a human being. Yeah. You are the one side, you are emotional fellow, then you are very close to the animal kingdom. On the other side, if you are bound to, to the wealth and to money and so on, then you are a slave and you are a slave of, of this kind of policy. So the human being is between two old values and he has to liberate the human being. Everybody has to liberate itself from this bonds because you cannot enter into the Aquarian age, it's not possible. And uh, because uh, it's not necessary to destroy a lot, this is only to be ready to change our lifestyles. And this everybody can do. We have our power with our will, a will to good, for instance, for the common good, and then we can do it. So uh, there must be no world war, there must be nothing catastrophic, and so on. No. This is only to learn to think clearly what is necessary in daily life, what should be constructive, not only for me, but for also for the family, for the whole surrounding, for all the people around me. And then it's okay, then this is a process of liberation. So I understand it like this. This is uh, for what I learned, not only today here, but also when we were together in the south of Switzerland. Also, I, would, I have one question what was in my mind. How can we now see, we, we know the Purusha has three levels, no? We were speaking in, in, uh, in, in the South on, on the three levels of the Purusha. Now I think we are on the lowest level of the Purusha here to understand how this guidance is. No? Because this is a liberation process and, uh, and the Purusha, this is the, as we know, this is the cosmic person, but this belongs also to every human being because we are also in personal huh? How we are related to this lowest aspect of the cosmic pollution. Ah. <laughs> the whole process here. Because this is this is the lowest aspect the the, the lowest aspect of the pollution. This is this is the, the liberation process what we are doing here. Yes. Because a, a lot of directive thoughts coming from the lowest level of the cosmic pollution. Yes. So uh, this this came to my mind when I listened to this one. Can I ask a question? Did you get the answer to your question? <laughs> is, it, is it a good time to ask a question? Yeah? No, yes, you can yeah. ask. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, following what you're saying, so it seems like 
now the, op uh, the, the, the previous age is digging its heels in, right? This is why we're having so much, so much trouble. So you're saying, you know, that we have to liberate ourselves, uh, move into the Aquarian age, to the, to the, uh, to the mental plane, um, and now there's so much trouble in the world because the opposition doesn't want to see the ha the old doesn't want to move into the new, um, and we heard at the UN yesterday, the day before, uh, the last talk in the Goodwill Seminar was about, um, it, it starts with the individual. Everything starts with the individual. Yeah. Okay, so my question is that I understand DK said that 85% of the population is still Atlantean. See that what? Someone said, uh, was quoting <coughs> me yesterday, that DK said that 85% of the population is still Atlantean. Is still of, of ah, the in the use, astral in the use in the use stage in the use uh, level. Yeah? In the, the humanity on the planet is in the in, in his mental capacity and the level of a nineteen year old person. Yeah? Oh, okay. So, so, so we are, we are becoming. So we are not yet adults. We are still in the use stage. Youth stage. Yes. Yes. This is nothing wrong. No, I'm just saying what hope is there for all that we talk about for yeah, change. But if if eighty five percent of the population is still yes. of an Atlantean consciousness, is that true? Fifteen percent are not. Fifteen percent are not. Yeah, but this 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 is nothing wrong. This yeah, is nothing negative. Yes, yeah. Okay, because. Therefore, we are ge getting now this kind of teaching, even we were speaking about in the United Nations about this. Yeah. So this is very interesting. Only some days ago, so was one point was also pointed in this direction. So because we have to become adults, we are still in the youth phase. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore we, are, we, we prefer to play, we prefer to play that and that and that and that, it's everything we, we like to play. We, we want not to think on the responsibility of our, of our games, of our, what we are playing here. So because this is then the next step, to take responsibility what we think, what we feel and what we do. So, but on these three aspects of responsibility, not too many people thinking today. Every thought we are responsible for. So uh, every deed, every feeling, everything, what goes out from us, we are responsible for. Mm -hmm. this, this but is very few people recognize that. But very few people recognize yes, that we, in the world. Uh, yes, and this is the point. We have to help all our surroundings, but not in an arrogant or aggressive way. We have to tell or to speak to them this is what I try with, with our two youngsters here in the house, because they are coming, they are approaching the 30th year now. And uh, so, because I understand a human being, when it comes to the 30s, then they have to stand on their own feet. And this is why I, I also want for our two fellows here, that they are standing when in one or two years really on their own feet, with their profession and with their lifestyles and so on. So this is for a lot of millions of people on the planet the same situation now. And therefore we have coming such teachers here into the world. And even in the United Nations now, we, they take on the same subject, more in the intellectual way, but it is the same direction. And this comes from also from the spiritual training from the Arkham School, that they get such success. They do the first seminar in 27 years, and the, and the room is full. And, and there were nearly 200 people there. I didn't, I, I came in the time where I was invited, but I had no seat because it was, was full. So, uh, uh, so this was for me a very positive sign. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I hope I was speaking afterwards with the organizers. I know them personally for a long time. Say next year we have to book the, the room of the secretary general uh, meetings. So because on only on the base we have 800 seats, 
So then without the balconies in the UN here. So if next time coming four or five hundred, then we have to have a, a larger room. And I think with this input of the Aquarian Age energy, which comes in now, every day stronger and stronger, more and more people will awake to themselves and then try to find a new orientation in their lives. And then when they read such invitations like the other 200 people who came to the UN, and then there may be the double or I don't know, we will see. And uh, so it is a process and if I was also very curious about this evolution in the last two years, I was restarting the the, the book, the, the Discipleship in the New Age by Master Twalkul, what he wrote down 80 years ago. But if you read this, 80 years ago, they already spoke about the same evolution, what we have now, what will happen, and so on. So these masters, they, they guide us in a very friendly and nice way. And what they now propose, everybody can read this, if you take Discipleship in the New Age, book one, you can read in the first pages, they offer a direct cooperation with the Masters of Wisdom on this planet for every disciple who is ready to accept a training for well discipleship. And the first what they offer is that they want to help us to develop our telepathic uh, capacities mm -hmm. because the Masters of Wisdom, they only work together on the telepathic level. And they want the same with the world disciples. So the first offer is, since 80 years already, <laughs> to train us in telepathic communication, and then we can constantly be with these masters of wisdom. And if there is any question for the evolution of the planet, for the evolution of our d different societies, and so on, so all for the common good, all the questions for the common good, we will have uh, very wise people who can guide us, who can support our activities, what we want to do. So this is a tremendous event now, what we have, and many, many people do not yet know this, but we have to tell the other people this, that this, that this possibility exists. And uh, for, for me, this is really the essential, the most essential activity, what we can do, and uh, I am now uh, working in this field for the half a century, and I, I'm very full of joy that now this enforcement increase. And this is this is beautiful for everybody because everybody can step in with his individual qualifications, with his individual joy and help of what we want to do. Because we have to become global citizen and forget our national orientations. This is the this is the sacrifice what we have to bring because the, the, the end of the national state is now here, and we do not need for the national states. Um, I, I had one. Uh, you say the, the first book has all the seeds of what is going to happen. No? And then uh, in the sixth and seventh books, we have the conclusion, no? what happened. Yes, what happened and what should be in the sixth and seventh book. Uh, in the music of the soul and uh, man sacrifice, <coughs> you will find how the plan uh, how the plan has, uh, was worked out. Mm -hmm. Because that in, in those books we have already worked with the Lord in the physical form, yes. and how these higher uh, masters, like Vedavyasa, Maitreya, and uh, <coughs> Maru, Maru means Moria, Devapi means Kuthumi, and Jvalakula, just, he, he just, he was taken as a disciple at that time. So, how for the coming age, till the end of, because this is a task, till the end of Kaliva, <laughs> we are just still in the in the beginning of the Kali Yuga only, we have passed only five yes. five thousand three hundred years. Yeah. The total extent of Kali Yuga is four thousand three hundred. Yes, huh? four three two. 
ಸೊಂಗ್ವೇರಿಯನ್ being atlantic beings were there even at, at his time very powerful they were very powerful for example <coughs> there was one fellow called naraka so this fellow is a very big atlantean at that time <clears throat> he has his kingdom and he has all this modern the aspects he has nuclear power he has laser power also he has the the power to to hold the astral beings in his control so having all these powers he used to steal away all the wealth from other kingdoms mm. in a very secret manner was at the time of krishna at the time of already at the time of krishna yeah. not before he was he was there little bit just little before and started all this mm. and it, he has intensified by the time of krishna because for him just krishna is just some cowherd boy yeah, yeah. he doesn't uh, no behind this so he was doing all and also he was all the young all the virgins young ladies he was just by his all these powers he was taking them away silently nobody could know where how they are disappearing you know from all the kingdoms on this planet many of these young girls especially from the ruler class they were disappearing hmm. and nobody knows how where they are going overnight they were by the morning when everybody wake up they are not, they are not there and they could not be traced what happened because this fellow has such powers and he used to take them all to his kingdom and imprison them he imprisoned them like that he has stolen 16100 girls <laughs> from the from the ruler class and he has stolen so much of wealth all this precious wealth and all these things from all these kingdoms and nobody could trace what is happening because he has such black magic powers but he can do that and so he was doing all these things and his kingdom nobody can reach first thing is it is an island and he he made in such a manner that first he made a a, a fort with with hard rocks hard rocks coffee <laughs> <laughs> Hard coffee and <coughs> he placed weapons in this and if anybody can cross the ocean and enters into his land he he made a big wall like wall of china mm-hmm. around his kingdom so if anybody approaches this first of all he will be destroyed by the weapons <laughs> why was it huh where was it near in near barat or yeah it was on the uh china s- no uh, it yes, is see. It, it is in the down in the south of bharat 
Like uh, Burma or no, still, Burma still it, south. Is, it is an island in the ocean. It is an island in the ocean. It is still there? Yeah, no, it has, it has submerged. Okay. It is no more. Mm. Because Krishna has destroyed yeah, this. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and he also made another layer when somebody suppose destroying this enters. He made another layer and he made a, a pool of water and put nuclear power in this. So if anybody enters this, it will be destroyed. And if somebody crosses this also, he has put laser. Mm. And nobody knows how he is burnt away. So by this, he used all these things for such a destruction. He is very Atlantean fellow. So, Krishna, <coughs> he was watching all these things and one day he decided that he has to put an end to this fellow because it is increasing and people are terrified by this. And it no use to take armies there because the armies to reach also is not so difficult, not so easy, it is very difficult. So Krishna only himself followed by one of his wives. He went there by air and then started to attack this. And then this fellow has his armies, not only physical on the physical plane, but astral beings. He sent these astral beings to attack Krishna. But for Krishna it is all the astral beings, he released them from astral level by his presence. So they are no more under the control of this fellow. Gone. And he broke all these layers. The layers of the weapons, the layers of the nuclear the, and the laser and all these things. He destroyed first. And then this fellow came directly to face Krishna in war. Then he killed him. And then he called his son and said, you from now onwards, I make you the ruler of this kingdom. But be virtuous, don't be like your father. So he put this son of this fellow on the throne. And then he has released all these ladies from the prison. All these women were released from the prison. And all these women, he released them and said, Now I will arrange that you can be returned to your places. But then they said, we are for a long time under this fellow. So when we go back socially, we will have no place. We'll, in society, nobody will accept us. So we want all of us, we, we became your devotees. Not only that, all of us, we want you be our husband. <laughs> Then he said, if you want like that, okay. And he took all of them to Dwaraka. He married all of them. <laughs> For him it is possible because he, <clears throat> and he married all of them He, in a proper way and he made houses for all of them in Dwaraka. Dwaraka is a big city at that time. And also it was some it was, it was once also tested that how one person can have so many wives and how how he can they can be they can feel comfortable then this narada one day he wanted to show prove this to the world that it is divine being not a physical being that is what we are going to study also in this first book this event of Naraka and his, and this this is not in the first book. This is in the third book. <clears throat> so, Narada visited each of these houses of these wives, and in every house he could see Krishna there present. In all these, because he had already eight wives before, and these are <coughs> sixteen thousand and one hundred ladies. In every house he is present physically. So this is the power of Lord Krishna. <laughs> so for the for the Lord it is possible. 
because those those people he he wanted him physically to be with them but he is present everywhere so for he is he is from the higher plane he could be present in the physical plane also but he is not bound by the physical plane <laughs> that is the state of krishna so it is very difficult for a, for a, the present humanity to understand if you think only in the physical uh, aspect you cannot understand this this is the phenomenon on the suprakosmic level so he is not a physical being he came down in the physical form so that all this you can you can study through these books at what master has given and all this understanding of all these aspects about the life of krishna so <clears throat> in this book what are the preparations that were made by the rishis that is that also this book gives you on one level what are the political events that were going on and what are the what are the misbehavior of the some some of the rulers and what are the rishis are doing on another level all this is given in a very synthetic manner in this books especially in this book all this simultaneously because on on one hand you have all the work of vedavyasa and his disciples co disciples and all these rishis and on the other level you have the the the, the kingdom of of which bhishma is the protector still and the and the pandu dhritarashtra and, and what they are doing at that level because how the dhritarashtra was because dhritarashtra even though he was blind not only blind but he is wicked in his behavior in his thinking because he is also has a tinge of this aquarian behavior yeah he is representing our <coughs> yes. society yes <coughs> so how pandu was doing he was working for the welfare of all the people even though they are brothers step brothers but their behavior is totally different pandu is totally devoted to the lord and working for the cosmic plan whereas that fellow is completely different he is very selfish and he wanted to have all this power in his hand so that his sons will be on power like this so all this is simultaneously happening and how the lord when he came into physical form how he could work out all these things <coughs> wherever it is necessary he was he was destroying on the phys- from the physical level for example when he was born from the very birth itself that is the situation when his parents were put in jail <laughs> krishna <laughs> Huh? Now it's uh, maybe time for a break. Yes, for a break. Okay. So after the break, I will explain what the father of Krishna was doing, why he was imprisoned, what are the situations for this. I will explain that also there in this book. And the soul of Lumiere is it out? No, oh. some of the rulers are from still from solar linea. But Krishna is from lunar. Right. Krishna and Pandavas, all these are from lunar. Know. But some of the rulers are not from, from Bharat, from other countries. Or? No, no, from Bharat. From Bharat. Bharat. Yes. Okay. Also in other countries, mm-hmm. other lands also.